I'm back in Nashville, hanging out on my patio. It's a beautiful sunny day, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Got some short sleeve action going on, which is a drastic temperature difference than what I experienced on my recent trip to Germany where it was in the high 40s, so a little cold glad to be in the warmer weather. I have posted my vlog to Germany, so if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave that linked in the description box below. Although I had a great time, traveling is not always a fun experience, and in today's video, I want to talk about some of the little hiccups I had along the way on this most recent trip. So hopefully you can learn from some of my experiences. I flew from Nashville to New York's JFK airport, to Paris, to Stuttgart. And while I was in Nashville, we were experiencing some delays because our plane was coming from New York and then going back to New York. And I believe there was some weather happening in New York that was causing our flight to be delayed. So as it kept getting delayed, I was getting a little bit more concerned about making my connecting flight into Paris. So I went to the gate agent to see if I would still make that connection. And she was, explaining to me that the flight was on its way so i should make my connection but in the off chance that i didn't there was another flight an hour after mine that was going to paris that they would rebook me on so i was like cool that alleviated some of my stress once i landed in new york i landed in terminal four and had to go to terminal one on the train ride i met a guy next to me who's from poland and through our conversation found out that we were on the same flight to paris we get to our gate and the sign above the gate said boarding had ended so like asked the gate agent, are we able to board this flight? And she's like, unfortunately, boarding's done. You both have been rebooked to the next flight and that gate is just down the way. So as we turn to go to our new gate, another gate agent came off the jetway and was like, hey, the door to the plane is still open. We can get you on this flight. I'm like, yes. However, they had given up my seat already when they had rebooked me and the seat I had originally picked was on the wings of the plane because it's less turbulent and they were only able to seat me at the very back of the plane where it is super turbulent. So I'm like, ah, that's such a bummer. But you know what? I made this flight, so can't complain too much. So I go to the back of the plane. Again, I'd packed carry-on only, but there was no overhead bin space for my carry-on suitcase. A flight attendant helped me find some bin space towards the front of the plane. And because it was a seven hour international flight, I pulled out my phone and the notepad app and wrote down what row my suitcase was in the bin at. So I would remember, so I'm like, okay, row 25, make my way back to row 56. Silver lining though, there was no one seated next to me and it was just a two seater row. So I had the row to myself, window seat or an aisle seat if I want to do and plenty of leg room. Smooth flight to Paris, except for some minor turbulence that felt major when you're in the very back of the plane. But as soon as we landed in Paris, I was switching my SIM card from my primary cell phone provider's SIM card to a French eSIM card so that I would have that data plan, but also a European number in case I needed to make calls internationally to another country. But while I was switching SIM cards, I was having trouble connecting my Apple ID to the new SIM card. And if you've seen my packing videos in the past, you know I have an Apple AirTag in my carry-on suitcase. And I got a little notification, it's like, hey, your suitcase is no longer near you. And I'm like, ah, oh, this Apple ID, why can't I get it hooked up? So then everyone deplanes, I'm the last one to deplane, go to row 25. My suitcase is not in the overhead bin. The level of panic that I immediately felt. I'm like, there's no one else in the plane. Where is my suitcase? And the bin in the row next to where mine was supposed to be was closed, opened it up, and there was a suitcase there. So I can assume that whoever took my suitcase, that was their suitcase. The gate agent for Air France that I had flown helped me call the phone number on that, on the suitcase was able to get a hold of someone they had looked at and was like, yeah, this is not my suitcase. So we get to the person who may or may not have had my suitcase and she has my suitcase. So 
that stress was immediately relieved. People always worry about checking a bag and the airline losing their luggage, but something to remember, even if you pack carry-on only, someone can still mistakenly take your suitcase. Now, I did pack an extra outfit in my personal item, so if I wasn't able to retrieve my carry-on, I did have another change of clothes, but luckily i didn't have to do the what if scenario because i got my suitcase back so some lessons that i learned from that situation is one i will pay the ten dollars for that day when i'm traveling for my primary cell phone providers international plan so that i could ha still have my number in use and data so that if anyone mistakenly takes my luggage they can still contact me because the contact number on my luggage tag is my primary number. So if I'm switching SIM cards that I may not know that phone number yet because the SIM card isn't activated, that someone can still contact me. So I will pay for a $10 day pass on the day that I am traveling. Oh, the sun is starting to come out now. <laughs> also, I had the Apple AirTag, but had I not been switching SIM cards, it would have helped me locate my suitcase because I was having issues connecting my Apple ID. I couldn't find my Apple AirTag when I went to the Find My app for my AirTag. So that's another lesson learned. Okay, the sun is here. Where can I go into the shade? Alrighty, had to relocate to a better spot. The sun had come out, which is blinding me. I'm like, well, this isn't a fun place to record. So I had a great time in Germany. My cousin had taken a couple of days off of work. So she was able to take me around to different cities to go sightseeing. But the last couple of days of my trip, she had to work. So I had planned some solo trips. And one of them was to Strasbourg, France. Now, before my trip, my cousin and I had kept an eye on Germany's transportation workers to see if they had planned any strikes. And there was a plan to strike the week before my trip. So I was like, okay, good, it's not gonna impact my trip. What we didn't take into consideration was the train that I was taking from Germany to Strasbourg, France was operated by the French and the French went on strike the last couple of days of my trip. So my train to Strasbourg, France was canceled, but I had done enough research in advance that I had research some other smaller cities to kind of redirect my plans to go visit them since they were lower priority and my cousin and I didn't visit those cities so I was able to reroute but one thing that I did learn with the trains being canceled is that the German transportation Deutsche Bahn does allow you to request a passenger's rights claim in the event that a strike happens so that you can get a refund even if you purchased a ticket that was non-refundable. However, it requires you to have an IBAN, international bank account number, for them to refund you the number. And most, if not all, US banks do not participate in IBAN and therefore I was not able to submit that claim with my bank account information to get a refund, but I do have traveler's insurance that I purchase every international trip that I have taken so I can submit a claim through them. Something important to know is taking a screenshot of my tickets because they were mobile tickets and on the mobile ticket is where it indicated there was a strike and the trains were canceled. I noticed now that I've returned from my trip that I still have access to those tickets on the Deutsche Bahn app. However, the strike notification and cancellation have been removed from the ticket. So it looks as if I was able to do that journey when in reality I wasn't. So tip, take a screenshot if you have mobile tickets or keep your paper tickets and all the receipts and any other important documentation if a cancellation and strike were to happen. I also saved the press release article that the French transportation system put out that there was a strike during that time frame, so that I had all the documentation that also included my boarding passes and flight itinerary to prove that I did make the journey from the US to Germany and back. So all of that was required 
for a claim on my traveler's insurance. The change of plans from Strasbourg to Ludwigsburg still worked out. Ludwigsburg is a beautiful town to visit. I visited the Ludwigsburg Palace, which was so beautiful. But one downside of traveling during off seasons or colder months is that museums and sites may have modified hours or modified tours. So the Ludwigsburg Palace does tours of the palace in German or English. However, in the off season, they only do tours in German. And I do not speak German, but I wanted to tour the palace anyway. They did give me a map of the palace that indicated a small description of all the rooms that the tour goes on. So I knew at least what each room was used for. However, and I don't know why I didn't think of this, it wasn't until three rooms in to the palace tour that I realized I have translation apps. So I pulled up Google Translate so that I could transcribe what the tour guide was saying so I can capture some of the history and the stories that he was telling. In the very first room, I think he told a joke. Everyone was laughing and I'm over here like, <laughs> because I don't speak German, so I don't know what he said. However, even though my phone is on silent, I noticed that with the Google Translate app, when you would go to transcribe and hit the transcribe button, it makes a sound. My phone is on silent. No one was talking except for the tour guide and we're in a confined space. So it was very silent on this tour if the tour guide wasn't talking. So this noise was very obvious. So I solved that by plugging in my headset to the phone, which silenced that noise. But it also had another benefit that I hadn't thought of, and that was the microphone was here on my headset versus being lower on my phone. So standing closer to the tour guide helps detect the audio so you can transcribe and see what um, your tour guide is saying but having the microphone up higher allows the sound to hit the microphone and be transcribed easier than the microphone on your phone being lower. Most people hold their phone by their waist, which is a farther distance from your tour guide's mouth. So that's something to take into consideration is to get the best sound capture is to be able to have a microphone that is closer to your tour guide's mouth outside of having to have your phone right next to the tour guide's mouth and be a weirdo. So having a headset really came in handy to be able to transcribe the tour. And that would be another tip that I would recommend is don't shy away from tours that may be in a different language than your native language. You can still take advantage of a translation app, but maybe also bring along your headphones to capture the audio with that microphone being a little bit closer. Those were some of my little hiccups or stressful situations that I experienced during my trip to Germany. Comment down below of any stressful situations you've experienced during your travels so we can learn from everyone's experiences and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.